Since its introduction in the late 80s, this aircraft has become one of the most infamous and recognizable of the industry. But beyond its iconic looks hide fatal flaws. This is the story of the McDonnell Douglas MD-11, the legend of the world's worst plane. Our history starts with a plane perhaps even more infamous. Throughout the 70s and early 80s, the DC-10 cemented itself as a hallmark of air travel. Popular consensus paints it as the most dangerous plane to ever fly, and this isn't far from the truth. However, after its turbulent start, the DC-10 proved to be a reliable and safe aircraft with a solid design. The same cannot be said about its successor. The McDonnell Douglas DC-10, powered by General Electric. In the late 70s, McDonnell Douglas was ready for something new. They'd achieved moderate success with the DC-10 and envisioned an upgraded version, capable of carrying up to 550 passengers. Under the project named DC-10 Super 60, engineers got to work on the preliminary design while those on Wall Street started looking for buyers. Unfortunately, their efforts were foiled by the very plane they aimed to replace. It was right around this time that DC-10 suffered two serious accidents. American Airlines Flight 191 from Chicago's O'Hare Field en route to Los Angeles crashed and burned moments after takeoff. The Federal Aviation Administration today grounded the DC-10. It's the fourth time in a week the plane has been set down, but this time the agency said the grounding will stay in effect until the problem is found, analyzed, and cured. These worked to gain the aircraft a poor reputation, as both airlines and the public grew to fear trijets. At the time, McDonnell Douglas had no choice but to scrap the project. A couple years later, they designed a more modest DC-10 improvement under the name MD Triple E. Unfortunately, the market once again turned against them. DC-10 orders had completely dried up, and the general consensus was that the company would soon collapse, meaning few were willing to do business with them. Now, they say third time's a charm, and with the MD-11, it was. In the mid-80s, a few more DC-10 orders came in, so McDonnell Douglas went back to the drawing board and sold the airline industry on a grand vision of a world-class airliner. What they got was the MD-11, a slightly tweaked version of the DC-10 described by one industry expert as classically ill-timed. In fact, the era of strict ETOPS regulations was coming to an end, and only a few years later, aircraft such as the 777 would fly the routes the MD-11 was designed for with only two engines. In the meantime, McDonnell Douglas's cash flow had been in a free fall for the last couple of years, so any real innovation for the MD-11 was out of the budget. The end product was a DC-10 that, in order to achieve a longer range and greater fuel efficiency, had been made significantly more dangerous. The most obvious design difference was that the MD-11 was stretched by about 20 feet, while the horizontal stabilizer was dramatically shrunk to reduce drag. This had several major effects. First, the center of gravity was shifted much further back than is typical for commercial airliners, making the plane awkward to control. Second, the plane's crosswind performance was significantly worsened. And finally, this in part created a condition in which the plane couldn't maintain a constant attitude in flight without input. So to counteract these effects, fuel ballast tanks were installed in the horizontal stabilizer, and a flight computer was developed to partially control the elevators. These were not the only problems. The design required takeoff and landing speeds around 30 knots faster than the DC-10, significantly reducing its margin of error. To make things worse, an NTSB report found the MD-11's controls were far more sensitive than other aircraft, especially at low speeds, and many times the autopilot would fail to disconnect. Now don't get me wrong, most commercial aircraft have some problems to be sorted after their launch, but with the MD-11, the flaws are so ingrained in the design that to fix them you'd essentially have to step back to the DC-10. Tragically, this design has led to three separate crashes in which the aircraft rolled onto its back during landing. 
The MD-11's advanced technology horizontal stabilizer also features a number of improvements that contribute to the tri-jet's increased efficiency and lower fuel consumption. Apart from its handling issues, the plane's performance was also severely lacking. Its engines were notoriously unreliable, and its fuel efficiency and range were well below what McDonnell Douglas had promised. As a result, many airlines reduced their orders, with some like American Airlines selling their entire fleets to cargo companies soon after launch. In the end, the MD-11 was a plane marked by its iconic design, but also by fatal flaws and subpar performance. It never succeeded in revolutionizing the airline industry as some had hoped, nor did it ever sell well among passenger carriers, instead generating marginal success in the cargo industry. While McDonnell Douglas had been struggling for decades, it was the failure of the MD-11 that finally took them out, and they were bought by Boeing in 1997, only six years after the aircraft entered service. <laughs>